Hello everyone, so in today's videos, we will cover that how to remote Cisco switch using SSH protocol. Earlier in last session, we have covered that how to access Cisco switch using Telnet protocol, right? So in switch also, in Cisco switch also, we can use Telnet and as well as the SSH. So now the time to understand that things, what is the difference between Telnet and SSH and which protocol we should have to use. So first thing is, if you will see here, so telnet versus ssh so here you can see in telnet telnet send plain text data on network right means there is not any security available in telnet protocol but in ssh ssh encrypt the data on network when you will send any data from your switch to any other switch or from your device to any other device that time this protocol will encrypt your data and then it will send so if any attacker will attack on your network and it will try to access your data, that time data will be in encrypted form. That means uh, attacker has to decrypt that data and that will be very much tough, right? So then next thing is Telnet use basic password authentication, but in SSH, SSH use public key for authentication. Means firstly, it will send the public key to the second device and in second device uh, only second device can access your data which has the public key right that is the difference between telnet and ssh so here you can see telnet is deprecated in security in security purpose if we in your company security is the uh, means uh, required so that time you don't have to use this telnet protocol but ssh ssh has widely replaced telnet in remote network access in network if you will see, so in your company and in every company, in most of the company, this SSH protocol is used. Right, so this is the difference between that. Now time to do that things, means how we can configure that in Cisco Packet Tracer, how we can configure on the Cisco switch and then how we can access the Cisco switch using this SSH protocol. So let's go to the Cisco Packet Tracer. Okay, so here you can see in this Cisco Packet Tracer, I configure this topology and in this topology, we have two switch. Right? We have two switch and in every switch, we have two system available. And I didn't configure any IP address or host name there. So I will configure in this video. So uh, if you don't know how to configure that IP address or that thing, so also you can understand that things, right? So first thing, we have to need one IP address, right? You have to understand that concept. If you want to take the remote of any device in a network, it can be your switch, it can be your router, it can be your PC also. So in every case, you have to need one IP address on that device to communicate in a network. So that means we have to configure IP address on every switch. So we have two switch, that means we have to need two IP address. So firstly, I will write the IP address here so that you can remember that which IP address we have configured here. So 192.160.10.1, I will configure on this switch. And on the second switch, I will configure 192.168.10.2. Right, that IP address I will configure on this switch. So let's see how to configure. So firstly, I will click on this switch and then CLI. So this is the Cisco CLI. So here we have to work, right? Here we have to set the IP address. So if you don't know how to work on this Cisco CLI, which command we have to use, what is the mean of these modes? So everything you can see in my last video, in my previous video, there I explained everything in a proper manner. So there you can see, right? So now first thing we have to set the IP address. So for that, we have to need global configuration mode. So firstly, I will write enable, then config key, and here we have this global configuration mode, and here we have to type interface VLAN and one. VLAN one means what? VLAN as we discussed in last video also. VLAN means virtual LAN. So in switch we have multiple ports available. In this switch which I configure in this topology, so in that. Uh, uh 24 port available so for the 24 the group of that 20 port is known as vlan we can say the virtual group of the ports is known as vlan so in that vlan on that vlan we have to apply the ip address because on every port we can't assign the ip address for 24 ports we have to get the 24 ip address so we will not configure that right so we will configure the ip address on the whole group that is VLAN. Enter and then IP address and I want to set 192.168.10.1 space 
255.255.0. That is the subnet mask of that IP address. Enter. And then to up that VLAN, type no shutdown. And here you can see that interface VLAN was change state to up. Now that's working. So first thing we have to do this on first switch. Second thing, on second switch we have to configure the IP address also. So the commands are same. Only IP address value will be changed. So firstly enable, mm -hmm, enable and let me maximize that and enable after that config key and here interface interface vlan1 and here we have to set the ip address ip address 192 168.10.2 and the subnet mask this and no check right so on both of the switch we have set the ip address now the next thing is we have to configure the SSS. But one more thing I will do here. What I will do, if you will see here, so the name of the second switch is switch, right? And on the first switch also the name is same, switch. So when we will take the remote of that first switch on the second switch, so that time we will not see any difference there. So if you want to see the difference, means if you want to recognize that, okay, that is the first switch. So we will change the host name also. So how to change the host name? Now see. So for that I will do exit here and that is global configuration mode. I will set host name. Space any name we can give, but here I will give SW1. That is what switch one. Right? Enter. So here you can see now the name is changed. And I will configure that SSH on my first switch. So maximize that and then the command is firstly we have to set that domain name. Right, IP then domain hyphen name because SSH work on client server model. So we have to need one SSH server. So for that we have to need the domain name. So domain name we can set any. I will set like test.com. Right? Test.com. That is the domain name. Then next thing is we have to generate RSA key. So crypto key generate RSA as we discussed in SSH we have to need the public key so we will generate that enter and here how many bits in this module you want so uh, 512 is uh, means the recommended thing but we have the range from 360 to 2048 so I will configure here uh, okay 512 is okay no issue but according to your company according to your need you can also change that so firstly we will set that okay after that the next thing is ip ssh and the latest version of that ip ssh is version 2 so we will use that okay for version 2 it's recommended thing is the 768 bits right we have the things also next time we also have to remember that okay no issue will again generate that so we will replace that yes and now 1024 i will set that and then again i will run that command ip ssh version 2 so it's enabled now now the next thing is line bty and 0 space 8 right bty means virtual teletype it is a virtual we can say virtual logical port in the backend which will open when you will create any session with the SSH. So here is the range. Zero space eight means what? You can take the remote of your machine from uh, on the different different nine locations. Zero so eight means nine, and here maximum range can be zero to fifteen. Means in six, um, we can create sixteen session at the same time. But I just give that in the normal form we can change also with 0 space 10 0 space 9 0 space 5 also we can give and that is a recommended value actually so i just keep that but according to your need in your organization you can also change that value so enter line by 0 space 8 then the next thing is transport ssh oh not transport input ssh input ssh enter then login local we will save the password and the username in locally 
then the next thing is username we have to create username space any name you can do but here i am just giving trainer space the password so i am giving one two three four five and then enter so username trainer and password one two three four five is set now now everything is done now let's take the remote so i am on my switch second here you can see this is my switch second so how to take the remote for that i will do exit and always you have to remember when you want to take the remote of any machine so you have to use this privilege mode right on this mode switch has on this mode you have to run that command so to take the remote using ssh the command is ssh space hyphen l space and then the username which we set so the username was trainer and then space and the ip address of my first machine that is 192.168 and 10.1 and then press enter now and now from for the password so put the password 1 2 3 4 5 then enter and here you can see we have the remote of my first switch sw1 right so this is how we can take the remote using ssh protocol right i think you better understand that things and if you want to see the commands so i just so the command also and one more thing before that i will show you as we discussed in last session also in telnet protocol also if you want to work on that first switch so enable password also we have to do because if you will see here if i will type here enable so no passwords means we have to need enable password also right we have to need that so if you want to see how to set let me set that so firstly i will uh, set the enable password any password oh sorry any password you can do but i will give one two three four five same password it's set now now go on second switch and now this time if i will try to run that command enable it will prompt for the password one two three four five and here we can go now i have the complete access of that first switch i can do anything right and one more thing from the pc also you can take the remote from the pc also but firstly we have to set the ip address on this pc also ip configuration and here we have to set 192 168 and 10.3 i will set here and then it's set now. and now if i will try to take the remote so first thing in real case in your system ssh uh, means ssh uh, tool can be there SSH tool means what? The utility in which SSH protocol is supported. Like Putty software is there and multiple power software is there. So in your software, that software in your system, that software should be there. Then only you can take the remote. So in this machine, I will take the remote on this command prompt. Here the command is same. SSH space hyphen L space the IP, oh, the trainer, username trainer and the IP address 192.168.10.1 password 12345 is the password and here you can see we have the access so 12345 okay and here is the command here you can see all these command and you can perform that command on your machine also right so these are the command so that's all for today videos and